Okay, so that was interesting actually the last 10 minutes there. Had more engagement than the whole previous parts, which is nice to see. Um, it's interesting because that was just social media. There's so much more one can do and see. And ultimately, all of, you, all of yourselves are in the business and many of you in the testing room as much as possible. And the goal of this is to keep you in there on the days that might be quiet. So how can you get around to doing this? And this is where my business has developed. A click, it's called Click Optical. It's a marketing side. And the idea is that we'd like to build up the expertise within this sector so that we can specialize and offer you services whereby you don't have to actually focus on them. We can deliver them and work in conjunction with yourself. Because what we found is we're working with a number of practices up and down the country with a varied kind of result. Some are excellent, some are OK, and some are not so good. But what we're doing is we're learning, and we're developing, and we're adding more and more services, because there's so much one can do. Um, even with ourselves, we're not doing absolutely everything. We're doing a number of them. So this part of the presentation is just to show you some examples of what we have done what we are doing with different sectors and Facebook being just one of them. So I'll start with the, the kind of bread and butter one in my opinion and that is Google PPC and SEO. So PPC is pay per click for those of you who may not know that. And Nathan talked about it earlier where there's two areas of a page when someone does a search they put in some keywords related to th something they're interested in looking for and there's the organic part and the paid marketing. It used to be in the old days that the Paid marketing was on the right, a couple of adverts were on the top, and the rest was all organic. They changed that, and I think they changed it because of the way mobile users are using it. You can't have a right and left on a mobile user, you just have up and down. But what that's led to is that the first four positions of most Google searches are actually adverts. They used to have them also in a shaded area, which made it obvious they were adverts. Now they've got two words usually saying AD. Yeah. Yeah, so they, and most people don't even realize they're ads. Now I'll ask you a question. In your yourselves, do you click on adverts or do you click on the organic or do you do a bit of both? A bit of both. But I do notice the ads. You do notice the ads. It's interesting because in, when I, I did this presentation, not this one, but I did a presentation to talk about Google Pay Per Click and the effectiveness of it about a year and a half ago, and people go, oh, well, they, no one clicks on those. And I was in my mind, well, actually I didn't say it, I said, well, how, how do you think Google got so big? Google's primary income from before 96 percent of his income is coming from Google Ads. Yeah, and I think you, you're going to the number of search, or you already did that. Three was it three point five billion searches a day, and if most of them are clicking on adverts, it does work. And I've got some stats actually from opticians that, that are using a combination of Google PPC and organic traffic. But the benefits of both are that you dominate the page. We talked about it earlier. You want what you want in the ideal scenario is that anytime someone searches for you, they find you, obviously and they find you first, not somebody, a competitor of yours on top, but also they find you for all the services that you do, all the kind of s symptoms that someone may have. So there's so many different words that you want to dominate that page for. And you don't want to be near the bottom, because if you're near the bottom, you're less likely to get clicked on. The great part of both of these, pay-per-click and SEO, is that it's highly targeted. You know, your advert or your listing should only really show when someone's looking for you. You know, they're, they're searching for a holiday to the... Maldives, you're, you're not going to come up. Because if it did, you'd stop using Google. So this is the, the relevance uh, aspect of it. So it's really highly targeted. It's easy to measure ROI. For those of you who are doing pay-per-click, it shouldn't be a guesstimate. It shouldn't be, well, I'm, I'm spending a £1,000 a month and I'm not sure if it's working or not. It has, in some ways, become a guesstimate in some cases because there's one thing that really can't be measured that easily, and that is if someone clicks on your advert, it doesn't do anything on your website and two weeks later it turns up at your store. It's difficult to measure unless you really have it in your staff's minds that they keep asking the question and they're able to drill it down because it's hard to measure. But there was a couple of studies done in America recently with some big retailers where they thought the PPC, the pay-per-click wasn't working so they stopped doing their adverts. But what they found in the subsequent months was that their in-store sales also dropped. So they related the two together. That was the only change they made. Yeah, apart from obviously the time of the year. So it is very easy to measure the ROI in general cases. Obviously, if you've got more presence on, those, on the both aspects, you're going to get more visitors and you're gonna get, your competitor is going to get less. That's kind of obvious, yeah? The ideal scenario, if I show you, if you're doing a search for anything, is that you have the situation on the right, not the left. 
Notice how half of it's below the pay. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But what, <laughs> what you want is you want to have as many listings as possible. Sometimes you can even have more listings. Sometimes the listing comes up twice. Sometimes a YouTube video is also listed. So you can actually have four or five listings for any specific term. That's the ultimate goal of what you want to have on a Google listing for anything that people search for that's related to what you do. So you have to do pay-per-click, yeah, and really. Five reasons you should choose pay-per-click. The great thing about Google advertising is you only actually pay for it when someone's on your website. So imagine doing a deal with a newspaper and say, by the way, I'll do, an ad I'll do the, the adverts free, but every time someone comes in, you give us a little bit of money. That'd be superb. If you think about it, that's exactly what this is. Obviously, if your website's slow, you're going to 50% of them are going to get to your site because they're just going to leave. If it's not relevant and the page doesn't look good, they're not going to succeed. But the great thing is that you only actually pay when somebody visits your website. You control your budget. You don't have to go out of control. You don't have to even, you know, at the moment, if you, do, if you did a search for Opticians Coventry, I'm, I've not done it, but I assume that Specsavers will be there, Vision Express will be there. And it's possible that a small independent might be there as well. However, the budget of the small independent optician compared to Specsavers is tiny, but they're in the same place. So you can really get in the same position as them because it's based on number of clicks. So if you have a bigger budget, you'll have more people coming to your website and more people potentially using your services. And if it's a smaller budget, you have less people. But you can be in the same position, even if it's for a small amount of time. You can easily reach your audience at the right time. We've mentioned this before. The reason it's the best platform out there is you're showing your optician advert to somebody who's looking for an optician at the very moment in time they're looking for it. You cannot beat that, yeah? Unless you, you know, actually you can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of one. <laughs> Organic search is great because you don't pay for the clicks. However, PPC results, if you bought in a new brand, for example, or Selena Gomez was wearing this particular thing, you could actually be up there on page one or Google or in the top positions within 15 minutes if you know what you're doing. That's how quick it can happen. You don't have to wait six months. You don't have to worry about who else is doing it. You can be there as well. It's very easy to do that. Here's the question that <coughs> some of you may be asking. Does it work? Three practices. Excuse the spelling of central. Glasgow optician, London suburb optician, <coughs> and, a cent and a central London optician. It's over a four-month period earlier this year. What you find is that in the cases there, that approximately between 20 and 50% 20 and of the traffic to those websites came from pay-per-click marketing. So if, you, if they weren't doing it, they would get half the number of visitors to their site. So based on that, you would think, well, that means that potentially whatever business they're getting from the web, they'd lose half of it. But here's the thing. The PPC traffic they're getting is probably more likely for people not looking for them. The traffic they're getting primarily to their site is probably people looking for them. In this example, because you're controlling what adverts go out and for which words, you're getting potentially all new traffic that you wouldn't have otherwise got from people that may not know you. So it's well worth doing because that's highly targeted business coming to you, and that's, gonna, that's definitely going to result in business for you. But what if you can measure it and you can say, oh, well, it'd be great if I actually knew how many of those people or how many of those traffic actually resulted in people buying? That'd be perfect because then I don't have to take a guess. Well, that's exactly what we do with OptiCommerce. Because what we found with those three practices, that this is the number of leads we generated for them in that four month period. So we generated 121 for the practice in Glasgow, 138 inquiries for the London suburb, and 155. <coughs> now, what you may be asking, what is a conversion or what is, what is an inquiry? Well, what we tend to do with our campaigns on our website is we know if someone's come from a paid advert to your web page, and then we know what they do on the web page because we have Google analyti Analytics. Most of the traffic that we get, we send to a specific page on the website. Within that specific page, we have a form which usually says inquire now, request more information, download a voucher, something which suggests an action. So in most cases, most of our things are driven by offers, 50 pound off, 10 pound off, an advanced eye test for the price of a normal one, but it's to attract new customers to a page and then get them to do an inquiry. So that is what we refer to. So we give a name, an email, and a phone number for somebody who's actually made interest with you. Yeah? Additionally, some people actually pick up the telephone. So they go to the page, they click on the advert, they get on the page, they read something, and they just pick up the phone and call you. We're actually able to measure and share the phone recording with you for that particular call because we have something called call tracking in our adverts. 
And by that I mean if somebody goes to the page from a paid marketing advert, the number changes dynamically. It still rings through to your regular practice number, but for that person it will ring via that number to your practice. And that phone call is then recorded. So what you're able to do at the end of any given month, we can say from these 121 inquiries, here's the names, and here's the phone numbers, and here's the email addresses of all those people. You can then go back into your practice management software and then tick off against the people who have come in and who haven't come in and how much they've spent. Hence, the majority of these have been with us for a number of years. These customers know exactly what business they're getting or what business they're not getting. And most of them are receiving a massive, a massive return on investment. Some, some, one of our customers, I think, is getting over £10,000 a month of in-store sales month on month for about three years. Yeah? Now, some of our campaigns are driven around brands and some of it's around clinical services. So we have a mixture of services that we are doing this for. And I'll give you an example of how we do it. You don't have to use us, by the way. You can learn how to do this yourself and do it. It's just a bit more tricky because we have the knowledge. And that takes time. So here we've done an example of Google search, paid advert, landing page, voucher request, email with a voucher. You can extend that because once they've got the voucher in their hand, what do you do next? There is something you have to do to ma make sure that comes through. But typically this is how a campaign works. Someone goes to Google, does a search for something. In this case, we've done Limburg, London. If they just wrote Limburg, we're able to target the pay-per-click advert around a geography, around the practice. So don't worry, your advert's not going to be shown in Manchester if your practice is in Coventry. Your advert can be targeted by time, geography, and you can even target specific groups of people. Yeah, you, if you're using Google Plus, for example. Yeah. Now, in this case, the advert appears high up at the top, above everyone else. It's got a higher chance of clicking. Inside the advert, we've got copy, which says get 50 pound off Limburg. Now, if you're looking for a specific brand, pair of glasses, and there's a voucher there which says get 50 pound off or something like that, you're more likely to click on the advert because it interests you. That's the purpose. If you don't put the if you don't put the ad copy in like that, and you just write where Limburg stock is, thanks very much you're going to get less clicks. And again, we have data on different adverts and how they work and how which ones don't work. So therefore, when we start a campaign with any new practice, we already bring that, that knowledge to the table, which is very, very valuable. So here in this case, get £50 off. When you then click on it, where should you send that person? So if someone's looking for an eye test, if someone's looking for dry eye treatment, someone's looking for an OCT examination, someone's looking for very luxe lenses, where should you send them to? Should you send them to the home page of the website? Maybe. It will work. However, what would the user have to do then if they're interested in something specific? They'd have to go through your website. Hopefully, it's done pretty well. Hopefully, it loads quickly. Every click that a user makes has a drop-off rate. So if you know that every click they do has a drop-off rate, why do you want them to do more clicks? OK, so you should send them to a landing page. Now, if that landing page has an offer, I hear, the, I hear the complaint, well, I don't want everyone who wants to buy Limber getting £50 off, or buying lenses getting £50 off, or having the eye. So these landing pages we do are specific to the campaigns that we build, and they can only be accessed from the pay-per-click advert. They're not accessible from the site generally. If you look at that landing page, there's certain things we've done to it. As you see at the top, normally a website has a menu, about us, contact us, our services, frames, all that kind of stuff. They normally have that. This page has nothing on the top. What's, why? Why do we want to send someone there and get them to look at other things? We want them to focus on the offer they had. And again, we've tested this. We've seen what converts and what doesn't. This has a far higher conversion rate. Now, when someone sees that, you've got two places. You've got the voucher at the top and the voucher at the bottom. And that page there, again, no video, but it should have video, really. But that page there, you can read in probably about 30 seconds. Yeah? You know, it's not, not very long, it's not very detailed, you don't have to go through three, four pages, and there's two points. So we've tested these pages over the, we've been doing this for two, three years, we found that these pages convert the best, and it's always changing, you've always got to keep testing and trying different things. That's the key to it all, yeah? So when they go to that landing page, there's a voucher request, there's also a call tracking number, and there's a call to action there, a strong call to action, click here, £50 off, whatever it might be. If you don't do the offer, you're going to have less success. You still will be successful to a certain extent, but it'll be less successful, so it's up to you if, if that's what you want. Once they fill in the form, they receive an email. You receive notification saying, Paul registered for a Limburg offer. He would like £50 off. And job done. We've done our part. Our marketing has given you a lead in a vicinity of your practice who's interested in a specific service that you offer, and the rest is done. Now, some practices at this point say, well, fine. They'll come in when they want to come in. 
Other practices say do something different. Now, what we again found is once this is, at, this is now out of our control, but statistically, with the practices we work with, those who pick up the phone, engage and call that customer, I think is personally a high level of customer service. Thank you for registering for our voucher. This is where we're based. This is the range we, we have. What specific one are you interested in? Would you like to come in and meet our Limburg specialist? Et cetera, et cetera. They're much more likely to get a return on investment. Yeah? So that's how, that's how that specific works. Now, in terms of actual figures, so here's an example of a successful campaign we've done. It's in the West London area. We've done a five-mile target around the practice. Now, some campaigns, you can have a bigger radius. If you have specialized services, for example, you know, behavioral optometry, ortho case, something like this, you can have a larger radius. If you live in an area where it's easy to travel 10 miles in 10 minutes without breaking the speed limit, of course, yeah, again, you can have a larger area. Yeah? If you've got pockets of po uh, populations in a certain area, again, you can have a larger area. What we did with this one was we had five campaigns for this specific customer. Uh, including Tom Ford voucher, a Christian Dior voucher, and an eye test voucher. So we done, they had a budget of £500. In a period of one month, we generated 400 clicks, just over 400 clicks, uh, from over, over 11,000 impressions. Now, 11,000 impressions means that the keyword was entered into Google, the advert was shown over 11,000 times, which has an impact, which has a benefit. Of that, you had a 400 clicks from 12,000. Some, some of you might think, well, that's not that high. In Google terms, it's called a click-through rate. If you have a click-through rate of over 1%, it's considered superb. Most of the adverts we do have a click-through rate between 3 to 6%. It's really high. And that's, again, the benefit of having an agency. Now, Nathan will go into it a bit later, but if you had a click-through rate of, let's say, 40 clicks, so it's 0.39, what Google will think of you is that you don't know how to advertise very well and they show your advert many times, and they don't really earn much money from you. So they eventually start, throwing, putting you, they start showing your advert less and less. It's called quality scores. Nathan will go more into that in the presentation. It's important to do the best kind of practice when you're doing this. The cost was £260, and they had 21 voucher downloads. So that's what we're able to measure. So at the end of that month, we said, you spent £260, it cost you about £11 a lead, and here's the names and phone numbers of those people. How much return did you get from that £260? And you can directly measure it. Now, I'm not able to share the exact figures, but this customer is very happy, and they're still using our services. I think they got 38 downloads last month, 38 vouchers. So we've actually improved it in that period. That's one example. Here's a practice in Brig House. There we've done a six-mile radius around the practice. Again, five offers. And this practice was interesting because for the first nine downloads they got, they got no one into the practice. So we asked them, did you actually call any of the customers? Well, you know, people don't like to be called, they're busy. I said, trust me, it works, just call them. I think they had a someone search for a specific type, uh, search OCT. And the reason someone searched for an OCT is because the hospital told them they should get an OCT done. So they went onto Google and they searched for OCT something or another. That customer came in and spent 700 pound on a Tom Ford pair of glasses. The first one came in and they were really happy with us because that basically covered a lot of cost for them. Then another one has come in recently and I saw another one's coming. I've, I've listened to a few of the phone calls, so it's working for them. So again, it works well in that scenario. Now, it, PPC does vary from area to area. More population, more searches, more likely for success. If you've got lots of competitors in your area, this is a great tool because most of them aren't doing anything on the, on the internet right now. You can see that by the size of the audience today. Most of the people don't even worry about Google because they're not aware of it. Yeah? So th it's important to try it, though. That's the key. Another successful campaign is, this is that one, by the way. Same, same, so this is results. 112 clicks, not a great number, but they had nine downloads. So for every 10 clicks, they got one download approximately. That's superb. That's highly converting. Yeah? 12 pound a lead, once again. So the idea is that you start with a small number of campaigns, they start working, then you keep adding campaigns. And as a result, you know, the breadth of your campaigns increases, and it just becomes a, it becomes a simple mathematical equation. That this is how much it's costing me for a lead, this is how many leads I, can, I need to convert, and this is how much profit I'm making. But obviously, each and every customer you get that's new, you have to look at the five-year value, not just the one-time value. Also, <coughs> what potential can they refer to family and friends? So it's massive, the return of investment. Unsuccessful campaigns, believe it or not, it doesn't work as well. Isle of Man. Couldn't really do much of a radius around the island. 
yeah, unless we want to get them swimming in. The practice said we don't do offers. We're an independent practice. It's quality, etc., etc. We tried to tell them, listen, it's just the way of enticing. It's the way people are, people are wired up. Naturally, every day on our emails, we get offers. We get this off, that off. We react to those <coughs> better. But they were not willing for us to have that. So we, had, we were unable to write good ad, ad copy. The landing page itself was pretty decent. It talked about the quality of the eye care, etc. The population of the Isle of Man was limited, so we couldn't really get many searches. 400 impressions, 25 clicks, no conversions, no people filled in the form, and no people called to practice. However, there might have been somebody that came into the practice, I'm not sure. The spend was obviously lower, so that's a good thing. When it doesn't work, you don't spend a lot of money, because if you're able to make it work, you're, you're going to get lots of clicks. How much should I spend on Google? Well, if you get the right formula, i.e. clicks, downloads, vouchers, and people's names, great, don't worry about it. Spend as much as possible because you know if it's working or not. If you're not able to track it, take it, you know, track it, try tracking it because it, it's difficult. If you, I don't say spend 2,000 pound a month. Some of our practice, we've got a single practice in Glasgow, is spending about 1,500 pound a month on pay-per-click marketing. All clinical stuff as well, not much, not many brands. So he's spending 1,500 pound a month, but he's able to track it very, very well, and he knows it's working. And he's actually asked us to spread, spread it out even over a further area because some people travel a long way to come see him because of his clinical expertise. But it's working. In London, we've got a practice that spends over £1,000 a month. We've got others that only spend £200 a month. It depends on the type of practice you are, yeah? But it does work. You just got to be able to track it. So that's PPC. SEO is the organic side. Does everyone here know how much traffic they're getting on their websites at the moment? That's, that's a good starting point build it, <laughs> check how many people are coming, because it's important. Because typically, I found, from my understanding, we've got 300 practices. For each practice you have, you typically have about between 300 to 400 visitors to your website. Typically, yeah? People looking for your phone number, people looking for your location, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, <laughs> organic search is great because it's free. Let's quickly run through the benefits. You don't pay Google for the clicks. It's a cost-effective strategy. Now, I personally, for SEO, if I was targeting and I was planning it, I would do it for more broad terms rather than model numbers or specific things because it could be that you drop a brand in six months, but you're high, coming up high for it. So more things like eye test, opticians, experience uh, you know, optometrists, whatever it might be, target more broad terms for SEO. It's a great way of protecting your reputation as well. Helps dominate the search page and blocks out competitors. And you can easily analyze the data and learn about consumer behavior. What I mean by that is, how many of you bring in new brands, new services to your practice every year? Is it, is it something changing? Yeah? How often do you check with the trends that are out there to see if it's worthwhile? For example, we've got a practice in London. He has a very high-end range of products. When it comes to choosing what lines he wants to bring in, obviously he takes people's consideration and his own knowledge into play, but he actually goes to something called a keyword tool on Google and analyzes how much people are actually searching for it. Because if people are searching for it, we can do a campaign for him. So he kind of puts that into his decision-making process. Also, you know, if you know that some things are being searched for more, you can give them more prominence on your website, which makes it easier for people to engage in those activities. Here's examples of what we can do with SEO. Now, SEO, if somebody tells you they can triple your, triple your traffic very quickly, be concerned. Because there's something known as black hat techniques in terms of doing things to your website which give you short-term gain but long-term penalties. So make sure people are doing it ethically. And if you're concerned about any of those things, talk to us and we can give you some advice. In this example here, over an approximate period of six months, we found that we could drive up the traffic by about 11%. Now, 11% is, in this case, roughly another 600 visitors a month. So we got him an extra 100 visitors per month to his practice over a period of time. Hopefully that trend continues every six months. So after two or three years, it's had a massive jump. That's one example of the test there. Another one here, we got them a 15% increase. And these are probably realistic in my opinion, 10, 15, 20%, something around that mark. It's not worth doing anything with SEO if you're only getting a 1, 2% increase. And if you're getting too much, be concerned because there might be something wrong in what you're doing. Yeah? In terms of what we do with SEO, again, same day, here's, here's some keywords. And 
in the brackets is where they were positioned before. So again, it's easy to track in terms of has it actually made a difference. If someone searches for opticians Coventry and you're an optician in Coventry, those two extra positions could mean another 10% of traffic for you. Again, more broad terms, but then there's also you know, some niche terms. So we did, we did something for a practice where we optimized his <coughs> website for Buffalo Horn Glasses. Buffalo Horn Glasses retail for a very large amount of money. Not many people do it, that's good. So we optimize his site. Now, if you were to do a search on Google today for Buffalo Horn Glasses, without you know, me saying it, he probably comes up number one in the organic list. Why? Click on the link, have a read of what's there. You'll see for yourself. Yeah? How do we do ISEO? It's a number of factors. On-page optimization. An example of that is how do you enter content into your website? Ultimately, SEO, by the way, is about content. Good content, Google reads it and ranks you accordingly. So don't be worried about putting a lot of content in your website, but don't just write mumble jumble there because Google can read it. I believe BMW did something a bit unethical many years ago whereby they had a black footer and in that black foot they had black text, so it's all black. Yeah. yeah. And what they did was they wrote the word over and over and over again, so the keyword density was massive, but I think Google penalized them for that because they realized they were trying to fool Google. So it has to be ethical. Make sure that the site is images are correctly named. When you upload an image into your website, is it JPEG 276 or is it opticians in Leeds? Plus something, something like that. Happy customer buying glasses from practice in Leeds. Yeah, so there's ways of doing it again. The site URLs is your page .co.uk forward slash question mark 6772 underscore three. Google reads that. If it is about our practice, optician practice, it might be better because you've got the word optician in your URL. Things like that, basic things. Yeah? Again, a good, a good web development company can help you with that. Off page optimization. <laughs> Adding blogs to Facebook and things like that would help drive here or adding content somewhere out there. If your website was to link to the BBC website, for example, it would be superb. So if someone wrote an article about you in the BBC and put a link to your website, it would shoot up the rankings because the BBC is a high authority website and automatically Google thinks if you're linked to them, you're gonna be a worthwhile site. So there's many factors here, yeah? <laughs> listings, free listings on websites. Have you, I mean, we talked about Google Plus a short while ago but there's lots of directory sites out there. Have you listed your website in as many of those local directories as much as possible? Have you made sure that the links link back to your website? Have you made sure the opening hours and everything are correct? Yeah, make sure that because that makes a big difference. We, we tend to do quite a few blogs for our customers when it comes to SEO because it's, it's about adding regular content to your website on a regular basis that makes sense for people to read and get an opinion and uh, make a relationship with you. So we tend to do quite a bit of them and that makes a big difference to your rankings. That's a bit on email. So next one, email marketing. How many people here do email marketing? One. How many people, okay, the, let me start with the failures of email marketing first. The amount of practices I've been to and said, well, we don't have a, enough of a list. Our customers don't give us their email addresses. One easy way of getting email addresses, start sending the receipts to them digitally and say, would you like a receipt? Most people won't say no to you. Oh, great, okay, here, just give us your email address and we'll send it to you. That's one great way of getting email addresses, yeah? <laughs> now, it worked, it works, because then also that way you've got a record of it and they can, they can always ask you questions, yeah? And they've got a copy of it in their email so they won't lose it either. Now, email marketing, I'll give you a really quick example of how successful it can be. For this particular event and the event that we're doing with Google, we did a variety of marketing activities. We made phone calls, we sent emails, we paid for an advert in the optician magazine. We've done a direct mail shot to 2,000 opticians. <coughs> yeah. And I think Okiko also did the same thing in, in some capacity. 95% or plus of our bookings have come from email marketing. And it was, it was basically free, apart from the time it took to create the emails to do. Compare that to the optician magazine. Compare that to postage with Royal Mail. Again, all of you have got an absolute gold mine when it comes to email marketing because you've got people that should be happy with your services, people that have used your service, people know who, where you are. And it doesn't have to be offers, offers, offers. It can be just educational. And I, 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 one, one example is how often do you currently commu commu communicate with your customers? Is it every two years yeah. when you want to recall? Yeah. So in that two-year period that you're not speaking to them because they've 
I'm not going to buy from you, what could happen to that particular patient? They could be walking past a Vision Express and look at the poster. They could be watching TV and they could see an advert. Ultimately, they will be seeing marketing from other messages. They could come across somebody on Google when they see adverts appearing somewhere. Yeah? Now, they are susceptible to that. So by communicating with your customer base on a more frequent basis, you're more likely to keep them engaged with you. And it doesn't have to be about offers. It could be about eye health and things like that. That does mean you have to sit there and create the content. Of course, we, that's something that we do for our customers. Now, some people say, well, Paul, you can't be sending them, sending them one email a month. That's going to turn them off. So I've got some stats here to show you what happens. Thousands of patients, targeted email, cheap and measurable. It's, a, it's an absolute goldmine. They have to be done professionally, though. An example of email marketing that I found really good, a few years ago, before, when I first came into this industry, Optrafair was the show. So, you know, one show every two years, no problem, everyone used to turn up. These guys came into the market, and I think they've shaken things up a little bit. And right now, I think, from what I see, 100% optical gets more visitors. Yeah? I think... I might be wrong, but I think it is. And uh, year upon year, they've been growing. Now, do most of you probably receive their emails, I assume, yeah? They're quite engaging. <laughs> um, Optrafair's also started emailing now, haven't they, quite frequently as well. So it's worked, yeah? So this is an example of it. it you know, good content keeps people engaged. You do read it, and, and it does make a difference to your success. Here's a customer of ours. So we, we have one service whereby we create a monthly newsletter. In that monthly newsletter, we create about 70% of the content is generic, about eye conditions, something seasonal. I think November's one talked about bonfire night and things like that, yeah? So it's very topical, it's very seasonal, and it's got really good copy. Not, it's, it's been well written. Our copywriters are very strong. Hannah's in the room. <laughs> yeah, now Hannah's one of our copywriters, of course. And it, it makes a difference, yeah? But then 30% of the content we create, we create it for our customers. So we'll ask them, what is, we'll phone you up, or we'll get an email from you. What is your practice news? What I, what's happening, what offers are you doing, whatever it might be, we'll, we'll personalise it to you. Obviously, you can have more influence on that by giving us more, but we'll create that email. In this case, his open rate was nearly 32%. Industry standard, say 16% is roughly the standard of what should happen in the health industry. So 32% is superb. Imagine that, your customers who never get communicated with, and 30% of them month on month are opening your newsletters and reading them. That's massive. So what you'll find if that happens, and I'm pretty positive of this, is that two years later, three years later, you'll have a higher retention rate for your current customers than you would have otherwise had. And this is important, I think. Yeah? You can also see the results here. We did May, June, July, and October. I think we also did August as well and September, but they're not there. But what you'll see here is on average, this particular customer had between 22% and 32% open rates month on month. So for those of you concerned that people don't open and people get turned off, it's not the case. Different people open different emails in different months, depends when you send them, etc. Yeah? But they do get open. On the right-hand column there, you'll see clicks. Some of our emails say click here to book an appointment, click here for this or that, and that shows you the engagement levels. And again, every single month there's been a percentage there as well. So that works too. We also can write you specific campaigns if you're doing any kind of days in the practice, if you've got any kind of clinical thing going on, if you've got Oakley Day, Lindbergh Day, Maui Gym, whatever it might be, we can also create the content for it. Again, because we've been doing this for a long period of time, we already have the content kind of skills there to make it easier for us to repeat the task. <coughs> 